Hi, George here, and this is an Adobe Photoshop Elements Extend Background project. Let's say you had a picture like this, but you wanted to have more space around your model in here, maybe more left and right side, more in the top. Just give it a more expansive feeling. You can do that by extending out the background. And before you do that, you should make a duplicate of this image. Go over here to the Layers, right-click where it says Background, choose Duplicate Layer, choose OK, hide the original, just in case things get messed up, we can always go back to our original right there, saved right in the file. Makes it real easy. And also, if you want to find more about how to do projects like this, a good place to look is my Photoshop Elements Coach program. I'll put a link for that in the description. It's a great, very comprehensive help system to help you with working in Photoshop Elements. Okay, let's say that we wanted to make this an 8x10 to fit on a standard photo 8x10. Let's see how close we are. Let's go over here, click on the Crop tool. I'll set this for 8 by 10 in the drop down right there. And if I click and drag, notice that this is staying at that 8 by 10 ratio. If I let go, there's the 8 by 10 ratio. If I pull this out so it gets just to the sides, that's right here. And let's pull this side over here. That's right there. And notice that we're a bit off at the top. Let's just back up to the touch right there. It's not actually a full 8 by 10, it has this big space open up here at the top. So to make it 8 by 10, we'd have to extend or expand the image up to fit in this missing area up here. It can be done. It's fairly easy to do. Let's say that we wanted to have even more space around this. I'll just do Control Z to back out of that. And this time, let's expand our borders out here. Go up here to Image, come down to Resize and Canvas Size, make our canvas actually bigger. Let's add an inch onto both of our dimensions. That makes this one 7, and I'll make this one 5. And the anchor point right here is at the center. I'll put the anchor point at the bottom. That way it's going to be adding in our new space on the sides and at the top. Choose OK. So we have some more space in here. Now I'll back up just a little bit. So a lot more space in here. Let's now check this for the 8x10 format. And again, I'll just come in here and just drag a box like that. There is the basic cropping. Let's just get this centered. Looks like right here is centered. Bring it out just a bit like that and a bit on this side. Now have some space in there. It's a little less than a half inch on each side there, about a quarter of an inch looks like, maybe about three quarters of an inch at the top. And I think that looks about the right amount of space. There we go. So here's our new cropped image with a lot of empty space in here. Now there are different ways of expanding this out. The technique you use will depend upon the actual picture. Sometimes going side to side works out pretty well with just taking the image and expanding it or stretching it. Let me demonstrate that one for you. Right here, grab the marquee tool. I'll come just outside the image and I'll pull a marquee like this and bring it up right up next to where her fur is right there. Not over the fur, just next to the fur. Go back to the move tool and then use the control T keyboard shortcut to give us control handles. You can then grab this handle here and actually just stretch the image out like that. So that stretches out that image and notice that everything looks just fine. Control D to deselect and that's an unnoticeable expansion on that side. Let's do the same trick on the right hand side. Come just outside the image. And then come up just right next to where her fur is, but not exactly on that. Back to the Move tool. Control T to bring up our control handles. And let's just pull that out so it's just a bit past that edge. And that looks really good. And Control D. So we've now expanded the sides out. Looks perfect just by stretching it. And this only works if you have large areas of background content like this. If you have any detail in here, like a person in here, that person would get stretched and look very, very funny. So it has to be something which is easy to stretch without making it distorted, or at least you don't notice any distortion in there. Now I could pull the same thing at the top, but it may or may not work because of this vertical line problem. And you also want to have a lot of space for your stretch. Let me show you what happens. Let's first come in here and I'll stretch this come right down to here. Again, just outside of her fur. Back to the Move tool, Control T, and then stretch that up. That works okay here. That's not too bad on that stretch. Everything seems to line up properly. So a vertical stretch is going to work on this one. Let's just back out of that one. Control Z and then Control D. Now you want to have a lot of space to stretch. If you only have just a little bit of space like up in here, and I did just a real small bit like this, this ends up being totally different. It depends upon the amount of stuff you have that you actually can stretch. The more that you can stretch, the better this works out. The less you have, the worse it's going to look. Let's take a look at this. Control T for our handles. I'll just stretch this up. You see how it gets really distorted here in the vertical. You can't stretch a really short selection and make it look good. It needs to be a very wide area. Okay, Control D. 
and then back out of that one. There we go. Another way to expand this in here is to use Content Aware Fill. Let's go back to the Rectangular Selection Tool, and I'll make a selection from the outside, and I'm going to overlap that just a little bit. Not much, just a little bit. The reason for that overlap is that we don't see a seam right there. I could have used the magic wand in here just to select that without doing this, but that would be right up against the edge and you may get a seam showing. So if you use a rectangular marquee and overlap just a little bit, this works out better. Okay, go up here to edit, come down to fill selection. You wanna be filling this with the content aware fill right there, normal and 100%, choose okay. And there is that fill. Notice how this looks much better. We have kept the same spacing on whatever these, these things are. Kept the same look over here. It all looks really nice. Control D to deselect that. And that did a much better expansion or extension up vertically than we got by stretching. So I tend to like using stretching left and right for whatever reason it seems to work out well for me. And if I'm expanding it to the top, I tend to like the content I wear feel better. It seems to give me a better result on that. So easy to do if you need to expand, give yourself some more room around a figure in here. The important things to remember is that you have those two techniques to try and you wanna make sure that you don't have any content in here that would look odd if it was stretched. Like a car would get stretched and look very funny. A person would look very funny. You need to have some kind of a background that can be stretched without it looking distorted. So pretty easy technique. And I have more great techniques on how to work with Photoshop elements. Again, you can learn all of those different techniques with my HDG Photo Coach program. It's like a help system on steroids, and I update that every single month so it gets better and better the longer you own it. I'll put a link for that right down there in the description. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up, and also if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well. I'm doing new videos all the time. You don't want to miss any of those, and I'll see you next time.